special tree grows hidden. The tree of life. They say whoever drinks of its sap will live forever. Was there something particular about this that just really inspired you and just kind of caught fire with you? As an actor, it was the most challenging thing I'd ever read. Um, I, I, playing three characters in one film and emotionally, certainly it's very extreme. And, and, and I've been looking for that kind of role in a way. I just hadn't really had that script as yet up until this. And I think as a movie, it it was a little in line with some of the things I've been reading philosophically, so I, I was I connected with it on some level, and I felt this is a movie that's about really important things. The myths tell us of a holy pyramid built upon the navel of the earth, the birthplace of life. A special tree sprouts there. They say whoever drinks of its sap will live forever. This is a love story. This is a movie for lovers. This is a movie for romantics. It's it's all about love. It's about love through the ages, about a couple whose love lasts for thousands of years. And um, I think it's I think it's very very romantic, and it hits people in the heart. But it does ask some really big questions, and it provokes debate in in in, in the moviegoers. They come out, and everyone sees it and interprets it in a different way. You shall wear it when you find Eden, and when you return. I shall be your Eve. Together we will live forever. You know, The Fountain of Youth is one of the oldest stories that people have been telling since the beginning of time. And uh, everyone wants to live forever. So uh, I, re I was curious why no one had really made a movie about it. And Fountain asks all those big questions. Why are we here? What happens when you die? Can you love forever? Big questions that we all want to want to think about. Mayans called it Shababa. Shababa? Mm. It was their underworld. Mm. The place that dead souls go to be reborn. What? What are you talking about? My book. I'm writing about it. Did it change the way you think about life and love and death and yep. that sort of thing? You know, in my research for this film, I got to hang out a lot with neuroscientists. I saw many operations and it did make me face death in my own life. Uh, my own and other people close to me. It made me look at that question, it made me realize how far away from being okay with it I am. I'm calling Dr. Licker. No, I'm afraid. Jeez. <laughs> what the movie's taught me and it makes me think it's about the fact that life is finite and therefore we have to celebrate life as fully as we can and, and live in the moment and live in the present and smell the roses and, and celebrate life because it's a miracle and it doesn't does not last forever. It's been happening for a while. What? I've been losing sensitivity to heart and cold. Why didn't you tell me? Because I feel different inside. I feel different. For me it's about how, you know, you could in the moment uh, find an immortality. Someone told me uh, last night that uh, they thought the film was about people searching for something they already have. And I said, well, what do you mean? And they said, well, we all are immortal in a certain way. And I think that's what the film is saying, is that there is an eternity, that we come from something that's eternal and we're going towards something that's eternal. It's all done except the last chapter. I want you to help me. How? Huh. Finish it. Finish it. I don't know how it ends. You do. You will. If you're afraid of dying, a little bit or a lot, that same amount you'll be afraid of living. So, and I, I don't want to be afraid of living. I don't, I don't know about you, but I, I want to wake up every morning and feel open and optimistic. So I realize I've got a little bit of work to do. Together we will live forever.